Good morning. Good morning, Stacey. Can you hear? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, this is Joy Bracewell. I'm in a second after you. Oh, but you, fantastic. But I, can you see me in the room or no? I cannot. I can hear you though, which is, it's good. <laughs> this is my uh, first the camera. So. Oh, I get it. Yeah, we don't, we don't have any folks here yet, so I don't know if they're being. You know, we're just right down the. <laughs> so, so you're what, you're in Pennsylvania, is that right? I am. Yes. And I forgot which institution. I can go look, but <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm at um University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the biggie. So do you run the writing center or? I do, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're a little bit, we're the writing center here is inside of um, a, a newly independent critical writing program. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they were part of, they were in, in, technically an independent writing program, but it was part of like a conglomerate of writing programs. So like creative, critical, and some of the other um, kind of like auxiliary writing pieces were, were all kind of lumped together in a center and we struck out on our own last year. So what's your reporting structure? So I report to the um, senior director of the Marx Family Center for Excellence in Writing. So there's the writing center, our critical writing, so like our first year comp program, um, things like that are all underneath of there. And Val Ross, who's the senior director, reports to the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. That's a lot. Um, so my co-presenter is trying to get in on WOVA. Says my phone doesn't give me Zoom as an option, but she's not getting in, I guess. Um, Click on Zoom link. Here, I'll take a picture of it if you go back to it and send it to her. Good morning. Good morning. We'll oh, see if it works. Awesome. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I got onto Zoom. I'm just tethering from my phone. So let's hope the connection sticks. Is this working? We can hear you. Okay. All right. So Stephanie, this is Stacy um, at the University of Pennsylvania. And Stephanie's at Georgia College with me. Nice to meet you. I'm very Sorry. curious. I'm nice excited to meet you to too. Hear your, very excited to hear your presentation. I'm excited that Joy doesn't have to do it alone. <laughs> that I got into the room. This is good. One step forward. <laughs> but thanks for for being here. Yeah. So yeah. So you're in Stephanie's in Minnesota in a cabin. A cabin, right? A cabin. Yeah, my grandparents' cabin. Um, so there's no real internet, and we're like 15 miles from the nearest city. So, yeah, or town, college town. <laughs> Stephanie, I am envious. I when I saw your background, I was like, I wonder if she's in a writing cabin, and you are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so far, no writing has gotten done in this cabin, but <laughs> due to the small children running around, but. 
but it's still a cabin. It's nice. <laughs> Where are you, Stacy, right now? I'm in Philadelphia. Okay. Very far from the quiet of any type of woods. <laughs> but you have a, it looks like you have a stable internet connection. So that's good. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. We you're just a little fuzzy but we can hear you okay so far so okay if it gets if it gets dicey do you mind um saying something and then i can just go to um i'll turn my video off and see if that does the trick yeah definitely okay. So Stacy was just explaining like um, that it's, I'm totally going to butcher this, but they just went on on their own and it wasn't a critical, I'm totally butchering this. Stacy, where, how do you report again? <laughs> like, yeah, what? we're I'm inside of a center for writing excellence. That's kind of all critical academic professional writing at the university and we report directly up to the um, dean of the college of arts and sciences and and what was the split again the focus you all are taking now yeah so we were when i came in in 2019 we were part of the center for programs in contemporary writing which included creative writing we have something called the kelly writers house that brings in um professional like essayists, poets, novelists, things like that, and, and does kind of seminars. They run big, um, like very successful MOOC on, in terms of poetry, things like that. So they run kind of um, academic, but auxiliary academic writing focus programs. Um, so kind of we were all grouped underneath of one center and we split off and are our own center now. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, what is the, I've read in your in your um, conference abstract that you don't have a writing program there. We do not. We're hoping to to build one now. We just got did we just got an announcement from a lot of work Stephanie and I did with the WPA CE that um, this search was successful. It was a formal announcement on Friday. Three new hires, so two tenure track, one lecture. Congratulations. Thank you. That is hard. <laughs> Very hard. It, and it wasn't without its bumps along the way. Maybe now Joy won't have to do superhuman amounts of work um, to for there to be writing on campus. Or Stephanie, but she's she's uh, un unfurling her wings in a different direction now. So I always think of um, ac well, now that I'm in academia, of course, when I was a grad student, I didn't think of it this way. But now I think of it as a kind of mercenary, um, you know, calling. <laughs> <laughs> going from Hi, Stacey, institution to institution. Alexa! I thought you, I, I didn't, I just wanted, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to say hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we can, from this vantage point, we can see basically the podium and a, we can kind of see the screen, but it's a little bit difficult to see from here. But I think once the screen shares the presentation, um, we'll be able to at least see that presentation. So we change the camera angle just to see the audience or? When you talk. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just letting you all know in case you think that we can see you. Okay, got it. <laughs> ah, okay. I won't fiddle with, with the orientations then. Never mind. <laughs> It's fine. Just wherever you're sitting, I can't see you or standing. Are you like at a table that's off camera? Yeah, like okay. here. Oh. And I'm there like, go. there's a table, a big boardroom, like IBM type. Table. Oh, okay. Are you going to be speaking <laughs> We've got from pictures the table? On the wall. Okay. What? 
Are you speak going to be speaking from the table or are you going up to the podium? I'll probably be here. Okay. They told me I need to be here. Okay, that works. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> And just so I know, um, Joy, are you going to be the person that's um, operating the slides or is that someone else? Me from the podium? Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. What's your name? Doug? Dara. Dara. Okay. Dara, I might need your help, but hopefully it'll be good. So not being in the room, it, it sounds like we have some attendees and we definitely have some folks joining us online. Should should we get started? Did we want to wait maybe another couple minutes? Oh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> these chairs are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we're, we're at 902, so let's maybe start things off. Um, good morning, everyone. My name's Stacey Kastner. Um, I'm uh, Delighted to be with you today. Thanks for getting up early and being here uh, virtually or in person. Um, thanks so much for Cameron for being here super early to get the tech all set up and working. Really appreciate you and your, your support here. Made me much less nervous to be uh, joining virtually today. <clears throat> you are at session K9, WAC and Writing Center Partnerships. Um, we have two presentations in this session. Um, the hope is that they'll run about 20 to 30 minutes with um, 15 to 30 minutes at the end for conversation, depending upon how long the presentations go. Um, I'm again, Stacey Kastner from the University of Pennsylvania. I'm going to start things off and then I'm going to turn things over to Joy and Stephanie from Georgia College and State University for the second presentation. Um, so I dropped a link in, in the Zoom chat for folks who are on Zoom um, to the slides because I am terrible uh, at uh, not being texty in slides, but it's also if you're in the conference app in the chat there as well. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen and I think that should bring it up, um, bring the presentation up in the room for folks as well. And if not, please just let me know. Okay, so I'm again, my name is Stacey Kester. I'm from the University of Pennsylvania where I direct the Writing Center. I'm gonna be talking about uh, a method of assignment sampling um, as tutor training methodology. And if there's any uh, serious social scientists in the room, uh, just a spoiler alert. Uh, I will not be talking about a rigorous sampling or an official sampling, um, kind of riffing off of, off of this idea here. Um, so I, I want to start off just by kind of briefly overviewing the, the problem, what kind of called this assignment into being or the inspiration for, for this assignment being the question of disciplinary expertise in the Writing Center. And from three different perspectives, both from kind of historical research um, theory on ideas for writing center and training and staff development from the, the late 90s, early 2000s, from, you know, research in writing centers that continues to go on where we hear from um, writers who have accessed writing centers about what went well or didn't go so well in the session. And then also just from my experience working with tutors as, as a writing center director for um, about a decade and a half now. And then I want to talk about what I what I did in my classroom and kind of share some of the tools 
that I use to collect a bunch of assignments <laughs> to build training to address some of these problems. And, and, and I'll talk through different iterations and things that we do with class once we have the data. Um, I'll talk a little bit about broad strokes, preliminary findings from kind of data analysis without getting into the weeds, limitations and drawbacks, and, and I'll close with some implications for writing center directors and WAC partners and practitioners. Um, so I, I, as anybody who's in writing center knows, there's lots and lots and lots of debates and critiques and conversations about uh, generalist versus specialist tutors. And I, I think Michael Pemberton's uh, 1995 piece, Rethinking the WAC Writing Center Connection, sums it up pretty well. Um, though this is one voice among many, but the, the question is really, if, if we know that academic writing is, is not, a, you know, kind of a, a static one size fits all approach, if we believe in disciplinarity, if we believe in, you know, the, the social nature of, of discourse and discourse communities and all of these sorts of things, can we really have generalist tutors in a writing center who aren't promoting that notion? Um, and we see this a lot in, 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 in data collection also. So there's kind of the theory when we're thinking about writing centers early on, how should staff composition be determined? You know, I, I think we've kind of moved past that because, you know, many years later, we've realized that staff composition are all uh, oftentimes outside of the control of writing center directors. We're not designing from the ground up. But most of us are working with a staff that uh, is coming to us from various means dictated external to our own planning processes. Um, but even still, it's, it's not just kind of the theory or the ideal of staff composition and writing centers that comes up here. When folks are uh, doing analyses of uh, writing center client report forms or feedback from clients, um, when they're doing focus groups, when they're doing interviews with people who have access writing centers, you pretty consistently get the type of feedback that's projected on the screen here from uh, that Laura Plummer shared in uh, 2015 from the University of Wisconsin-Madison's writing center, where a, a writer talks about all of these wonderful things happened in my session and, and that was great and I'm grateful for it and this, this was helpful and productive, but since I was working with somebody who doesn't have the same disciplinary expertise as me, there's kind of a ceiling um, to the, the kinds of help that they could offer. And, and actually I, I was looking for a little bit of advice or feedback that reached beyond that ceiling. Um, and then it, just in my local context, the reality of being a writing center director every semester, no matter what I do, even at the end of doing this kind of rigorous data analysis of assignments across the discipline in our local context, tutors tell me that they're really, really nervous. That is the thing that they are most nervous about um, going into sessions is, is that they're going to encounter something that they've never seen before, that they have no expertise and that they're going uh, to, to, to feel um, kind of out of their league. Um, so uh, this is one of two examples that I'll share. I, uh, students at the very end of our training course are partnered with a mentor and they do a practice um, kind of shift in the writing center where their mentor is there to observe, to intervene if need be, to provide support, depending upon how, how, how the tutor in training is feeling. And then students write a reflection afterwards. So this is a reflection that was written by a tutor in training who's studying criminology and bioethics. Um, and you can see this, right? She, she writes in her reflection, I felt really comfortable in this first session, which was for a writing seminar, because I just completed the course last semester, um, which suggests, you know, it kind of protects, she didn't feel so comfortable with the next session, which wasn't a course that she had taken. Uh, but she says, you know, my second session was on Zoom and it was with a senior who needed help starting their research paper for a nursing class. Um, they were struggling with finding sources, I did all these sorts of things uh, in both. I felt slightly like I was going in with a blind eye, but we see that there's, you know, there's this kind of disclosure of, I was more comfortable in the session that I had some experience as a writer in, in that context, giving advice than, than in the other one. My second example comes from a, another tutor in training who's studying English and potentially creative writing. Both of these students are, are, are sophomores or were sophomores at the time of writing this. And this is a little bit more direct. So she writes, you know, I, I freaked myself out pretty thoroughly leading up to my, my first session. Um, when I saw that my two appointments were Harvard Wharton MBA applications and a history paper, 
I haven't taken a history course here at Penn yet, I was pretty nervous. Um, so regardless of training, despite training, you know, no matter what I've done in, in classes, there's a, a reality for me that tutors are, are really nervous, and, and, mm. you know, whether we should be, you know, having generalist or specialist tutors or not, you know, whether clients want specialist tutors or not, there's also the, the writing tutors themselves um, feel a need to have a little bit of disciplinary training in their back pocket to be mm -hmm. able to draw from. And oh. even when they have it, they're still nervous. Um, so, you know, based on that, th there's a lot of good advice out there on, okay, well, what do you do as a writing center director? And, and it comes down to training. Um, how can, can you, and yes, you, good news, yes, you can train tuners in, in, in genre awareness that will give them a kind of threshold to be able to work from that can give them some tools and strategies to work with writers who, in who are working in disciplines far afield um, from their own kind of comfort levels and experience um, experiences. Um, one such advice, my favorite piece, the, the best advice I found as a, as a tutor training article comes from Catherine Savini. It's a 2011 piece in Writing Lab newsletter. She comes up with a really nice framework of domains with a kind of question list that tutors can have in their back pocket if you encounter an unfamiliar genre. Hey, here's some, here's a framework that you can use to work through that unfamiliar genre to give yourself some background that you need so that you can catch up, but that's also going to help the writer because it's going to be developing their genre analysis also. Um, so, you know, again, she kind of emphasizes that we absolutely can do this. We can have specialist tutors. Um, they can be well-prepared and well-trained and, and highly functioning within writing center multidisciplinary contexts if we provide the opportunity for them to practice analyzing different genres and different discourse communities. This is the same argument that Dan Melzer makes in his book's Assignments Across the Curriculum, um, a national study of college level writing. Um, this is a great study. If it, I'm sure lots of folks here are familiar with this. Um, in 2011, it's uh, over 2000 assignments were collected and analyzed. So it's a great piece to get to work through with tutors. Um, and, and Mouser closes with some recommendations directly for writing centers and, and, and here's how you should be training your tutors. And what he says is writing assignments are revealing classroom artifacts. Instructors writing assignments say a great deal about their goals and values as well as the values of their disciplines. Um, so based off of, uh, off of the <laughs> pieces primarily as well as Tathan Zawacki's um, Engaged Writers Dynamic Disciplines, which is a study of um, writing across the disciplines at George Mason University. Um, I decided to, to collect lots of data in my own class. Um, so I, I came to my current institution in fall of 2019. And in spring 2020, I started asking students who are enrolled in our tutor training class um, to participate in this collective research in class um, that would train them uh, to become and to have tools uh, that were genre aware, um, to give them a little bit more comfort and confidence in, in their sessions. Uh, and it's a pretty straightforward, simple assignment. It starts out, you know, it, it, tells, it tells students select any two assignments that you've completed at Penn beyond our class and beyond our critical writing seminars, our, our first year writing sems. And it lets them know you're going to need to reference and eventually upload the assignment directions, um, if there are any, um, and yeah. your responses to the assignment. And for each assignment, I asked students to kind of uh, shape information two different ways. I asked them to catalog their assignment submissions, and then I asked them to employ a standardized coding tool to analyze each assignment. Um, so the, the catalog, um, has a, just a very few different categories. So college, department, course number, course name, assignment title, and keywords. And I do this because it gives us a really quick and dirty way to look closely at the data, right? So, you know, when students go in, this is just a Google Doc. There's an appendix for every semester that I've done this. Uh, last semester, spring 2023, was my sixth semester doing this. So that you know, my tutors and training can go in and scroll through very quickly. And, and what I want them to see is, wow, there's a lot of writing happening at Penn. It's happening in lots of different departments. It's happening in lots of different courses. 
the assignment titles are really varied and different and also keywords. The keywords are, are fairly consistent, but I, you know, and I want them to start questioning, okay, does perform or consider or share, or argue or explain mean the same thing across all of these different contexts? And of course not, but they can start to see um, just from this initial kind of cataloging that the things that we're reading in class, so Melzer study, Case and Zawacki's engaged writers to dynamic disciplines, Savini's piece, that this questioning methodology of writing centers is, is particularly important when we get into multidisciplinary tutoring because you know the explain is not explain is not explain is not explain. Um, so it gives them their first kind of fresh, fresh look at that. Um, but in general, my, my purpose here is to is to get tutors feeling, you know, hey, there's a lot of writing going on at Penn. This is fascinating and also we have a lot to a lot to prep for. Um, and I do that quick and dirty view because the second piece where they're actually coding using a standardized kind of coding tool that's built from those sources that I mentioned, um, it gets a lot more in the weeds, which makes it a lot more difficult to do a quick and dirty analysis. It'll take kind of several classes for me to be able to shape things and put things together in order for us to be able to look at this. So this coding tool is a, a 24 uh, question Google document um, or Google uh, Google survey. Um, I'm not sure if people can see my screen, but hopefully I'll just scroll yeah. through it really quickly. It asks pretty standard things, name, name of class, the teacher or program advisor, the name of the departments of the course or the program. I ask them to characterize the course. So things like, is it a seminar, lecture, lab, other kind of thing? And I, I, I want an idea of globally how the course functions. I ask them for the title of the assignment. I ask them to copy and paste in the assignment directions, then to write a short summary of the details of the assignment. So to give a little bit of a qualitative description. Um, I ask for course number. I generate kind of a list of, do any of these words appear? This was co, this list was co-generated with students in, in spring 2020 who were the first to kind of move through this assignment in the course. Um, these are familiar words. These are words that are drawn directly from other people's research. Um, I asked them what college the department is in, the number of pages of the assignment directions, uh, the number of pages of the assignment in itself. God. Uh, wow. The time that they have to complete the assignment, the time that they actually spent on the assignment. This is important for tutors. They are always giving kind of best practice advice with most of them write their stuff the night before too and do just fine. Um, mm -hmm. I ask about audience. I ask about scaffolding, so pre-writing. I ask how many drafts were due. Genre, again, genres were co-generated with students who did this the first time. Um, citation style, authorship, incorporation of research. Um, and the incorporation of research, what I'm really interested in is what kind of research and where is it coming from? Who's responsible for finding it? So is it self-generated or is it given to them by the professor? And then I ask them to upload the assignment um, and to upload the response to the assignment. So when we get through that, we've got a lot of stuff that, that <laughs> we actually look at, right? Um, so what we do with that um, is I've done tons of different things in class. And, and one of the things that I constantly have to remind myself of is that this is teacher research. I'm building this as a training database for myself, not as a researcher to, to, to look at. Um, so one of the things that I do is, you know, that these are quick and dirty things, speed dating. Okay, you, you've done all of this, you've uploaded this, come to class, um, I'm going to put you in pairs or threes, and, and you're going to have five minutes just to talk about your assignments. You, you will have five minutes as a disciplinary writer to explain to your partner uh, what your assignment is. Um, talk to them about um, the purpose and function of the assignments. And, and really here, what I'm asking them to do is, okay, You've read this research from all of these scholars who have done research. You've collected your own research. Now I want you to triangulate it with what these people have found using their language and words and things like that. Um, and I do multiple rounds of these. Um, and, and I'll do this sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take about, you know, maybe three class sessions. We'll just keep doing these kinds of speed dating rounds until we've gotten through the class and, and everybody's circulated. Now this works really well because I have tutors who are multidisciplinary. They're coming from all over the institution. Um, 
Another thing that I'll do is it, when we follow up from speed dating, I ask people to write discussion board posts. So to reflect on what it is that they're taking away. So again, I'm bringing them back into the readings. Here were the research questions that these researchers asked of their data. Um, you've just done an analysis. You've heard some things from your friends. Okay, now I want you to reflect on what you noticed based on what you read about, based on your conversations. What are the patterns? What are the differences? What kinds of questions came up? What kinds of frustrations are you hearing from writers? Um, and really ask them to drill down into, you know, what are the words being used? Do they demand different things? As you get to hear from writers, when you see the same word in these assignment sheets, are they actually the same words? Um, and I, you know, they, they come up with really great things. They start to teach themselves these sorts of things or they confirm and make real for themselves what we're reading in the literature. So this is an example from one student's kind of reflection. In my case for COM 282, discuss really just meant discuss the film in context of our course material, making insightful connections. There wasn't a need to argue for a certain position or belief. Meanwhile, some of my peers had to argue and take a stance with their discuss prompts. Um, down a little bit lower, she writes, one peer was discussing a history paper, stating that he had to take a stance and argue his position. The history class I'm currently in, however, wants us to place an Egyptian artifact in its context, explaining its role and influence. There's no need to argue for anything, certain, uh, certain position or belief. So what, what they're taking away here is, is showing that these kinds of activities mitigate the risks of, of what Pemberton's raises and, and other scholars as well have raised as a concern of kind of tutors walking away from these courses as generalist tutors, thinking that there is, you know, this kind of monolith of academic writing, that, there, that we can come up with this kind of broadly applicable universal notion of, of what good writing is or what academic writing is. The more that they do this and the more that they discuss, the more that they see, you absolutely positively have to contextualize everything that you see, even if it's in the same discipline that you're in, even if it's, you know, sometimes even if it's with the same professor and it's a different course. Um, you have to ask the writer. There's this kind of insider knowledge that you need. You cannot assume that you know things based on experience. Mm -hmm. um, I've also had them do some practice stuff for, for the same purpose. So um, planning and prep, I'll create groups um, that are particularly designed with students from different disciplinary backgrounds. Um, I ask students to come in with hard copies, bring in a copy of the assignment, bring in a copy of your response to the assignment, and then I'll pair them up. And you know they'll switch and give each other assignment sheets, not the actual assignments. And, and the writer who's kind of floating off in, in, in a land that is from a different discipline will kind of sketch out a plan or an outline based on that prompt and no other information alone, how would you respond to it? Um, and then they come together and they talk about it. Um, and, mm. and oftentimes what happens is the, the student who was in that class kind of you know looks at the outline and says, okay, I see why you would do this, this, and this, but here's what the professor talked about in class, or this is actually mm -hmm. the third response paper in a series of response papers, and here's what I learned from the first two. So again, they start to develop that sense of, okay, the, the benefit of a writing center is that there's a writer in front of you, and you have to ask them and get kind of a full, rich context for, for writing situations. You can't assume that because you're a pretty good writer that you can come in and you know what's expected. You have to, have to, have to collaborate with the writer in order to do that. Um, uh, another thing that I've done that I, I really like is I'll just pull bits and pieces. So I'll prep a data set for class and they'll just spend time research memoing. Um, so one that I did this semester pulled, arranged a data set for students. So it was the name of the class, the characterization of the course, the title of the assignment, the words used in the assignment sheet, keywords used in the catalog entry, um, the copied and pasted in assignment directions, and the short summary of the assignment details from the student. And I asked writers, you know, I asked tutors, I want you to look at the assignment directions as written by the professor. And then I want you to look at how a tutor in training summarized that. What do you see? Um, and they see wild things, right? And, and, and again, they walk away thinking, okay, it's really important for me to ask to see the canvas page so that I can read the assignment because even tutors who are really good writers, presumably, and who are halfway through a semester in a course on writing pedagogy, aren't amazing at accurately summarizing the expectations of assignments in a way that an outsider could really understand what those were. 
Um, another thing that I'll do is just we'll take time in class. Uh, I, I will open up the database and I'll say, OK, here's a bunch of papers. Um, scan through and find one that you have never written before that kind of intimidates you. Read it. What do you notice? Um, and then I'll partner people up again. Um, great. So here's somebody who's from that discipline and they can kind of talk about, okay, this is standard, this is not standard, these types of things. Um, again, these are all quick and dirty training things meant for in class to give students exposure, not to develop them as disciplinary experts, but to get them more comfortable being uncomfortable in the writing center and understanding the types of methodologies that we use, mainly questioning, conversation, conversation. Uh, collaboration as effective ways to kind of mitigate these uh, challenges that you face as a generalist in disciplinary writing context. Um, so there's also some kind of broad strokes findings here. Um, I've done uh, collected six semesters of data. I've had 73 students participate. There's a total of 146 assignments in our corpus. They're from 52 different writing contexts at Penn. Um, including 38 different departments and 14 different non-departmental contexts, like debate clubs, things like that. Um, this is just kind of a, a flash screen of the kinds of departments that are included in our sample. So everything from American Sign Language to Spanish to computer science to engineering to history uh, to fine art to South Asian studies to urban studies. There's a range here, um, which always makes me really happy as a, as a writing center director and a writing person to see that my colleagues across campus clearly value writing. Um, so uh, in terms of authorship, number of pages and audience, nothing surprising here. But again, the, the purpose of for me of doing this is to let, see, let students see that our local context is not any different from the research, external research studies that we're, we're reading about in class. So overwhelmingly, 92% of papers were single authored. Very few, only six had two plus writers and only two had, had two writers. Um, overwhelmingly, and this is great news for Writing Center folks, um, about three quarters of the papers were between one to five pages, which is great. We, can, we have 60 minute sessions. This is exactly what Writing Center researchers predict can be covered in, 60, in, in a 60 minute session well. Mm -hmm. uh, Audience, again, no different findings. Uh, you know, almost 90% of the audience was just the professor or the professors for the course. Um, peers came in second at 17%. Um, the TA came in next at 10%. Um, and then there was a couple of things like simulated public, um, actually public facing, and, and others. So people wrote, wrote in categories. So things came up like um, professor simulated audience in a pre-o program, for instance, or Somebody had to write to their parents. Um, scaffolding a number of drafts. Again, nothing surprising here, except great news for writing centers. We really function. There's a need for us on campus in terms of providing scaffolding opportunities for students. What we found is overwhelmingly 89% of, of, of these assignments uploaded, only one draft. That was it. You, you handed in one draft. Um, and in terms of scaffolding, there were a few other things. There's a couple of people had conferences, a few people had source proposals or outlines or topic proposals, but for the most part, one draft and, and about 50% had no scaffolding whatsoever. Um, time used to complete, again, this is one of my favorite questions because it's, it's, it's a way for me to tell tutors, hey guys, uh, don't give advice that you don't follow yourselves. Um, overwhelmingly, though, most people have a week to a month to actually complete assignments. They're completing it in a day or a week, um, which is fine. <laughs> uh -uh. Genre, uh, nothing surprising here as well. This confirmed Melzer's findings that, yes, a lot of people are assigning argument papers and research papers, but there's a vast majority of other genres being assigned as well. People are innovating on the paper and doing exciting things in their classes. Um, but again, what, another takeaway for tutors is I, I cannot prepare you for every genre that you will encounter. There are genres that you, you won't know, um, and they'll see things like people have submitted stuff like mathematical proofs, um, op-eds, which are a little bit more familiar, theory critiques, you know, so things that you would expect to find and, and things that you maybe wouldn't expect to find. Um, citation style, this is, a, is another piece that I think is really interesting. 86% um, of the assignments required research to be incorporated. Almost half of the assignments provided that research for students. 
and almost half of the assignments didn't specify a specific citation style or didn't require citations at all. So that, to me, this is huge. These are problems and complaints that I hear in terms of, you know, we have these academic plagiarism offices and all of these sorts of things and some of it's on us. Um, so anyway, this was, this was delightful to me because it confirmed some of my own suppositions. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead really quick here with my, my end time. So implications, you know, I kind of went through these throughout. Um, the assignment is really great. Um, it's a, it provides a rich opportunity to really deeply engage students with readings. It prepares tutors really well as tutors, but also as, as multidisciplinary thinkers and, and writers. Um, it also really has helped me as a writing center director on a very, very siloed campus in an independent writing program. Um, understand what the heck is happening on campus. Um, and it's amazing. So if, it, if it's something that you're thinking about doing, I would be happy to chat and share materials. I've had a really good experience with it. I, I find myself constantly fascinated um, and my students as well are, are, are end up having really good experiences here. Implications for WAC partners. I, you know, if you were in the room and you're a WAC director, I would encourage you to, to chat with your writing center director. See if this is maybe something that they could spend a week on in class because it's, it's uh, you, you have a built-in set of participants uploading data and a built-in set of participants who are high quality coders of data mm. who, as they're coding for you are getting experience and really, really solid training in, in how to be genre aware tutors. Okay, so thanks. And I am going to turn things over to my colleagues. All right, thanks so much, Dara, and thanks so much, Stacy. I'm definitely super excited about what you just presented. Um, as you'll see by the end of our um, slides today, this is basically where I'm going back to basics. Um, uh, well, and this isn't really basics. This is really sophisticated stuff. But tutor ed is where I'm going um, forward with WAC. Um, so I'm Joy Bracewell. I'm the Writing Center Director at Georgia College and State University in Milledgeville, about three hours south of here, famous for Flannery O'Connor, and then down the road, Alice Walker as well. Um, and joining me is uh, Dr. Stephanie Sevchek, immediate past faculty director of the Mentored Undergraduate Research and Creative Endeavors. And do you wanna say more, Stephanie? <clears throat> I think that's good. Um, as of the end of May, uh, that's past faculty director. <laughs> awesome. So let's see, I'm trying the arrows here to advance. Okay, I'll just do the clicker there. So Stephanie, you wanna give us the overview? Yeah, sure. So today we're gonna talk to you all. Thank you so much for um, for putting us in a session together. Stacy. it was great hearing about exciting work that you all are doing um, at Penn. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about a collaboration between undergraduate research. So Murace, you'll hear a lot of in this presentation, that's Mentored Undergraduate Research and Creative Endeavors. Um, that's our office or person who um, is directing undergraduate research and creative endeavors. Um, and Dr. Bracewell and I have worked together before I took on this position at the beginning of the year, um, the academic year last August. Um, so we wanted to be able to collaborate together and um, really push forward writing on campus because that was also, you know, part of my background in um, literature and humanities. So just a quick overview. Um, 
that collaboration that we're going to talk about actually just ended because um, of a lack of support um, for my position in undergraduate research. But we're going to talk a little bit about how the collaboration came into existence, um, some facts about the two entities, the gaps, research and writing as a potential entree to WAC, so the collaboration and its limitations. And then Dr. Bracewell is going to really dive into redefining the mission. So writing centers as WAC and institutional knowledge making as research. So thank you. Awesome. So quick facts and the gaps. Um, so the Writing Center was begun 20 years ago as a volunteer effort, and it was a course release from um, a faculty member. And he would say hello at the beginning of the semester and then hello again <laughs> at the end of the semester for the consultant. So there were some things that weren't working well. Um, so when I came in in 2018, um, uh, we actually have got built up to like 1500 to 1700 sessions yearly um, and this year with this collaboration with mentor under undergrad research um, it was a very small uh, set of all those sessions but it made a huge impact on the momentum in tutor ed and like outreach across campus um, so uh, i was pushing for online um, tutoring before the pandemic but now it's definitely here to stay. I don't have to convince tutors at all about the usefulness of this. And every year I have a, uh, we have um, like a very rotating set of staff, which I would love to have it be more permanent, but we get folks for a year and then they have to get sucked into teaching really fast. Um, and then my sort of uh, folks that I get to have more long term are the undergrad peer tutors and I can I have a budget for them so I make sure they come from all disciplines um, and I try to stay away from English because we have so many folks um, grad students in English. So, um, so the writing at Georgia College is um, set through the university system of Georgia, which the core courses are English 1101 and 1102, which some of you are very familiar with. Um, and the writing at Georgia College was actually centered around creative writing grad students, not sort of, you know, what do we need on campus to like teach writing? So, um, so we pushed this year to kind of start a writing program, but we're in the nascent stages of that. Um, there's no writing across a curriculum, although it's a liberal arts campus and there's a lot of people who really believe in that on campus. Um, and Stephanie was very involved with um, a lot of things in this second round of things, which is the GC Journeys, which is high, the branding for high impact practices on campuses, campus. But when that was formulated, um, they said they were going to take on I believe it was like five to seven high impact practices, but writing and writing intensive courses were not included in that. So the branding doesn't include writing. Um, and I've already mentioned like how the writing center started. So Georgia College has about 50 uh, or 5,000 to 5,500 undergrads a year. They're letting in a huge class like in the fall. Um, so 200 students matters a lot at Georgia College because of space and resources. So they're they're letting in 1,600 students because of budget stuff. Um, and then they have about 1,000 um, grad students. So if, you know, thinking about how to create a culture of writing on campus, you know, create connections, like um, study disciplinary writing, like get faculty to think that way, that would all really require curriculum interventions. And although we're super proud that like, we're probably starting a writing program, you know, this you know this fall um that was sort of that's one of those things that's very up in the air and like requires a lot of administrative support and that sort of thing and that that's something that we can't 100 percent control of course so uh, another kind of area is what's called area b which is these big ideas critical thinking classes that used to be kind of dream classes for faculty but um a lot of stuff has happened over the years so that um, what was once sort of faculty led has kind of become a little more dispersed and gotten into the politics of like cap seating and that sort of thing. Um, and then of course capstone. So we were thinking how can we use our positions to kind of, you know, use our processes jointly to improve both and really maximize resources. 
Yeah, and so to give a little context about undergraduate research on campus, um, it's under that umbrella of GC Journeys, which is um, in the center here, you'll see these are our high impact practices. Um, and we have an office, an associate provost that kind of um, is on top of, of all of those things, um, though the unit kind of keeps changing. Um, undergrad research is under that umbrella. Um, students at Georgia College get five high impact practices by graduation. Um, one of those options um, is undergraduate research. There's no full time staff. Uh, there's a half time faculty director, and that was kind of hard fought and hard won. Um, we're in a bit of a budget crisis right now. Um, and so that is um, taking someone who's faculty and giving them course releases. Um, and I stepped down from that because it was it was too much. <laughs> um, and I had access to five hours of support from an administrative assistant, staff member. Um, and then I did manage to get two 10 hour a week student workers. Um, so the big accomplishments that we've had recently for undergraduate research is we won uh, the 2020 Kerr Aura Award for um, undergraduate research. We have about 41% of our students doing undergrad research at any given time. Um, we hosted our very first research day, kind of a campus-wide 500-person um, research conference, the largest research event ever, which this is why I could not continue in the role. Um, this was an enormous amount of work. It was really successful and amazing. Um, and Dr. Bracewell and the Writing Center actually were managed to be involved in it. Um, in really integral ways, but it was it was a lot. Um, we give out 72 undergraduate student conference travel awards of $500, and we awarded um, actually six this year, $2,500 um, summer funding requests for research partnerships. So there's a lot of money kind of coming in and out of, um, of this office. And so we both identified kind of opportunities where we wanted to grow our programs and collaborate so that we were working better, not harder. Um, for undergraduate research, I wanted to be able to also impact learning outcomes on campus. In particular, we seem to have been awarding and rewarding students at the end of their journeys in research. So I wanted to really get more participation from first and second year students um, and more support to develop the research skills that would enable them to go to conferences with their mentors um, and to help students see themselves as researchers. So embedding, embedding um, research tutoring into some of these GC signature classes that Dr. Bracewell mentioned was one of those plans that we had hatched. Um, I wanted to fund more creative activities, expand research day, um, and just collaborate more with the Writing Center because uh, undergrad research has a bit is a big pot of money, but there's no staff and no um, you know people to actually support it. So Dr. Bracewell has some of the structures, and I have some I had some money, so we wanted to be able to put those two things together to support writing um, and research on campus. Oh, and just getting back to a couple of um, sources on this connection. This wasn't kind of coming out of thin air. There are obviously some really big connections between writing and undergraduate research. There's some models out there for under for for writing and research centers on campuses. Um, but writing is obviously a skill that research helps to develop, and it's also um, a tool in the toolbox of becoming a researcher. Um, so, and it's something that's very kind of thought of as very important across all disciplines, right? The in tenure and promotion for faculty research is obviously a really big element. So um, just embedding some of that into the core curriculum and across the university in the absence of WAC is, is one of those things that we wanted to do. So touching on a couple of those gaps, um, as I mentioned, I wanted to create more of a process driven um, you know, construction of research tools and uh, the the ability and infrastructure to help students see themselves as researcher and um, have a little bit more of a pipeline for getting students involved in undergraduate research. And since the the writing center was amenable to it, it seemed to make a lot of sense to um, to mobilize the writing center as a support for undergraduate research and a way to embed 
writing into folks who are already utilizing the resources of mentored undergraduate research and creative endeavors, my office. Um, and then go ahead, Joy, on the Writing Center. Cool, thanks. So um, we had the student facing service, like in the spring, we had beautiful slides <laughs> advertising not only our workshops, but like research day. So we did, we're able to do the groundwork for Stephanie that way. Um, and, you know, our sessions took on like more robust aspects for students, you know, seeing themselves as research re researchers. And as you'll see later, like through the particular sessions types like reflection and metacognition. Um, so the big thing that I wanted to do when I came in, com having come as a Britain fellow from Georgia Tech was multimodality, but space limitations and the fact that the, there wasn't a first year writing program and they weren't doing any multimodal stuff was sort of like my biggest um, barriers to that. There is multimodal projects happening across campus, but it's very grab baggy, but this was an entree into like a process, you know, a space where this was happening. And that was amazing. Stephanie was also amazing about getting faculty mentors to, to do tutor education. Um, so it was really wonderful. Um, and also, you know, on campus, like the previous writing center person had been from medieval studies, but he got really into expressivism, which was great. But then he didn't want to um, look at surface level of lower order concerns at all. Um, so we were still kind of balancing people being frustrated with the writing center, quote unquote, not assisting students in the way they thought, you know, they needed real, real help, quote unquote. Um, but also that we wanted to, you know, be seen from like basic writers, but also with those who are like really committed and sort of, you know, knowledgeable or savvy about research and also bring in people who didn't feel like they would be, you know, leaders or researchers who like had a lot of potential. And that's what I found so wonderful about the way Stephanie was approaching the role. So research and writing as an entree to um, WAC. So some uh, the collaboration and limitations. So I went into writing centers for collaboration, which is kind of you know ironic when given that a lot of writing center directors find themselves alone when they actually get to a, like their director's position, depending on whether they're at a very big institution or not. And I'm not. So you know any collaboration is going to be really important to me. Um, and I love the fact that our collaboration could be based on like sharing all our information, you know, um, not having to like be strategic about what do I tell this person, what do I not, um, but also um, mutual commitment to like um, improving student learning. Um, so I felt like our mutual commitment and interdependence um, with each other was just uh, so rich and fruitful. So as I mentioned, oh, this is you, Stephanie, sorry. Yeah, so um, basically in a nutshell, if you, what we landed on as a kind of pilot that ended up being the only year <laughs> um, was that we were going to uh, think about ways that tutors could immediately impact student researchers. So for students to get um, funding through my office or through me, <laughs> <laughs> um, I changed some of the application processes to include a mandatory visit to the writing centers. And they had, um, so we constructed a series of different Murace centered um, writing appointments. Um, and over here on the right is just a little diagram about course based undergraduate research experiences. So a lot of the kind of principal um, foundations of course based undergraduate research really lend themselves well to. Um, getting some involvement from the writing center. I mean, upper level research does too, but you know, at the level of course based, it seemed like that would be um, something in the future that we could have kind of really gotten into the curriculum on. But we came up with four different types of appointments for students to visit the writing center, specifically for Murays Four: um, a pre-conference abstract appointment, a pre-conference oral presentation appointment pre-conference poster presentation um, appointment and a post-conference smart goals kind of wrap up conversation. So really kind of pushing the limits of what the tutors um, were comfortable with, <laughs> uh, but they were such good sports for all of it. 
Yeah, so just in the particulars of the sessions, it's interesting to think about how much repetition or reinforcement or different angles need to go into, like Stephanie said, um, the tutor is kind of feeling confident and understanding and really owning things. So um, these session forms that Stephanie actually kind of came up with the big picture sort of goals of each session based on um, the more traditional writing goals that I had put in for our like standard form were super helpful. So, um, and also the tutors, um, they're not here, they're out for the summer and they didn't come with us, but so, some of them actually made sure to kind of interview other tutors that about what um, they felt like the sessions were about and then what some of the roadblocks were. So like um, guidance from tutors uh, provides like confidence um, for students from, from the start. But like I said, a lot of our grad students come for MFAs, MAs in English. So STEM heavy projects was a reach for the, for the writing tutors. Um, so oral presentations, um, um, these were fun for a lot of folks, um, again, and the tutor, you know, observing and reflecting on the student's skills, just kind of providing extra confidence. And Stephanie and I went to NCUR together, the National Council for Undergraduate, um, is that right? Conference for Undergraduate Research. And I heard folks who were part of that conference students saying, oh, well, I went to the writing center to practice and, you know, it was great. That, my tutor was so nice. Um, so this really did provide a boost for students. Um, uh, the pre-conference poster session. I feel like this was really fascinating um, because, you know, it's visual. I've been wanting to get into visual um, sessions for a while. Um, and also Stephanie pulled us into judging posters um, and she brought in the president. And I felt like having seen poster sessions in the past, I thought the poster session was going to be like a few folks sort of like, you know, wandering through like, you know, kind of on their own the the place was so packed that my two one of my tutors is kind of um uh introverted she was just like overwhelmed with how many people were there but she thought this was great sort of um sort of practice and professionalization she was like this i can put this on my resume um so these were also great sessions for a lot of different reasons getting us to expand our repertoire across campus to help students um, and again, like reflection is wonderful. And this gave us an excuse to ask students to come in and reflect on their experience and think about what are they gonna do going forward? Because a lot of times, um, you know, they're in pairs or, or groups of four, people are at different stages, like some are graduating, their lab is in transition. Post pandemic, there were a lot of issues with a lot of different things. So um, these were great, I felt, uh, you know, for us to provide that space for reflection on campus. Yeah, so just to thank you, um, Dr. Bracewell, for going through those. And one of the amazing things that she sort of alluded to was that, you know, we were able to leverage faculty to come in and help train tutors. Um, and I feel like that's one area where we really could have, you know, gotten deeper and deeper in the weeds in a way um, and strengthen the training there that bringing in. Um, so we had a professor of communications who came in to talk about those the posters and visual effectiveness and communication. Um, and, you know, we had other people who were willing to, to help out with this too, um, because it is a lot. It's a lot to ask of the tutors. Um, and it's a lot to kind of ask of students when they, a lot of them hadn't used the writing center before. Um, and so they found it very valuable, but, and they hadn't thought about the writing center as a place where undergraduate research could really be augmented and um, you know improved upon. So the partnership, a couple of the things that we've already gone over, I required um, writing center sessions, those special writing center sessions for funding. Um, I didn't make it 100%, it was mandatory in writing, but um, I didn't withhold any funding from folks who, who didn't attend. So I think um, there were around 50, was it, appointments that you all mm -hmm. um, hosted. And I think in total, we had about 80 students um, who should have gone in. So in other words, there were about 30 that probably that slipped through the cracks that 
Um, if it weren't the pilot phase, I would have, you know, tried to be a little bit more um, stringent on. Um, and as I mentioned, for a lot of the application processes for getting funding, they were very baroque and overly bureaucratic and it required signatures from department chairs and deans for $500 reimbursement so eliminating most of those barriers um, and empowering the mentor to be able to sign off on projects um, and I, I feel like was helpful for getting more first and second year students in the door right if a first and second year student is asking for funding and they need to go to like the dean of their college they may not mm -hmm. even know who that person is or what that role is um, so those were some of the 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 elements um, that I worked on yeah so again um, before Stephanie took over this you know mural race like it was sort of it had become more and more sort of like unre un unobtainable on campus and research day it had such a major impact that it was talked about it was in march of this year it it was talked about on the day and the weeks after and then you know just a week ago some people in meetings about student life were talking about it it really brought energy to our campus because we are liberal arts and you know it it brought that energy of the best of what we do. Um, so some of the things in the writing center, I've already mentioned like tutor education, you know, being able to, being very specific about the types of sessions we could offer. We were also able to help Murace with tu down tutor time um, in terms of abstract proofreading. So before there had been faculty members like, pouring over abstracts, which, you know, is really not the best use of their time because they'd already been approved by the other faculty, um, you know, who, by the mentors of the students, and they just needed a good proofread to make sure they made sense. And so the tutors were able to do that. Actually, one tutor was able to do that. So um, now, since we were thinking this would be a five-year thing, and it was a one-year thing, and I'm sort of the last woman standing, um, what we do going forward, you know, is going to depend on a lot of things, but this might be more of a 10 year thing in terms of how I see this going forward. Um, getting back to like developing more workshops, because when we talk to Elon, they have such a robust, you know, everything but undergrad research and writing center. Um, the workshop series we were thinking about and we're already planning for was what they were already doing. So we felt very validated by that. So I'll just talk about, you know, our pie in the sky projects that now I don't know if they will ever come to fruition, not with me at least, um, but a couple of ideas that we had for the direction that this partnership would go um, was basically in a way WAC, right? Like it's not totally different from WAC, but thinking about how we can embed um, writing and research in tandem across the across the campus, across the university. So 360 implementation, um, that that really tight collaboration between Murace faculty and WID faculty. So making sure that everybody who's kind of doing research and doing writing are in communication with one another. And that was going to happen kind of through us collaborating, we could kind of disseminate that collaboration and encourage that collaboration. Um, and I think hopefully we did get more folks invested in sending their students to the Writing Center um, and thinking a little bit of the Writing Center as not just a place, you know, where creative writing happens or something that um, faculty in science and STEM were sending folks there. Um, so thinking about curriculum change, resource sharing, as Dr. Bracewell mentioned, a lot of what we did, you know, we don't really hold withhold research um, and resources from one another. We really tried to share everything um, that we had, um, and we had planned to kind of have some tutors that were maybe funded through both Murace and the Writing Center um, and have a grad student that we were going to share to really fully um, sh sh kind of put the money where our mouths were with this um, collaboration. And in the future, perhaps having a center for writing and research as some institutions have. Um, I forget now, I don't think we have the list on this presentation, but there are several institutions that have a center for writing and research excellence. Um, and we really liked that model. And we were you know, talking with folks at the library, like this was a big um, thing, but part of what um, I think you can probably go to the next slide here, um, Joy. 
I think I know what it is. Yes. So part of what we discovered um, through this collaboration is that if the structures aren't there to support it, that even the best hatched collaborations can't um, continue. So this is really what happened with us, that even though we really wanted and we were both really committed to the collaboration, there was um, we were lacking in institutional support, which is very odd because everybody really loved Research Day and everybody loved what, what I was doing um, with Murace, but because of budgetary issues, um, it was just an untenable situation um, doing the full-time work of a faculty director for this, you know, $100,000 budget um, on a half-time course release load. So I was still teaching eight or nine credits and, you know, planning research day on top of teaching eight to nine credits is just too much. Um, and so I had to unfortunately step down, but this going back to that Butcher and Gilchrist article that Dr. Bracewell talked about earlier, um, without a supportive authorizing environment, um, collaboration is unlikely to succeed. So that's really the the biggest barrier that this collaboration ended up ha ha having, that even though we kind of laid all these little pieces of infrastructure and used our resources and pooled our knowledge, um, that without that sort of authorizing environment uh, being supportive of the collaboration, and not just in, in name, right? Like there was a lot of support sort of nominally for what we were doing from the faculty, even from administrators um, and the folks with the purse strings. But when push came to shove, um, the the support wasn't there for the, the full robust institutional support wasn't there for the collaboration. So going forward, which way to whack for me? Because I am pretty committed to this, but I also have been feeling the burnout from the pandemic and lots of stuff that writing center directors had to face during that time. So um, we do have three folks coming in um, uh, to start a writing program. Um, I uh, want to, um, oh, I'm skipping ahead. Um, so, and this is what we were able to do, the evaluator service. Um, we, uh, Stephanie was also on the composition committee. So she was wearing many hats. Um, so we were able to support a course theme pilot based on the work of the previous writing studies person. Um, we kept that alive. Um, so she was able to do GC research day and multimodal tutoring. Um, and again, I skipped ahead, but we have the three cl cluster hires and again, I'm committed to, to WAC. So how do I see that happening? I see that happening now through the writing center. Like, not that I won't collaborate. I will. I'm, but I'm like thinking about how to strengthen the writing center and its connections and then building from there. Um, so thinking about mural Harris, um, um, institutional knowledge making. So um, really coming from a place of strength. So, you know, writing centers know about the institution. So strengthening um, uh, writing in the disciplines, tutor education and our data collection and assessment. Um, I've got a tutor coming in this year with who is applying. He's applying to, he's gotten into the MFA program and he's got a PhD in sociology from Ohio State. <laughs> and so, um, he's going to help me with um, assessment. And so that's this is my going to be my year of assessment with him, hopefully. And then in the spring, I want to do an embedded tutoring pilot and do a study with an economics professor. He's already done work with GC1Y. He loves these courses um, and he really believes in, in them. He talks about the economics of shrimp and he, he um, makes shrimp for his students every Friday. So um, <laughs> So I want to be able to kind of show the value of, hopefully value of embedded tutoring with him um, and then doing a tutoring and self-confidence study with Learning Center um, director for programs. And ending um, where Stacy started on Pemberton's article from 95. So um, thinking about how tutors can strengthen whack through their good tutor ed and also like the the connections they may find um, between the knowledge structures of two different fields so basically those fortuitous connections that happen in tutoring itself i want to think about how that could affect um, you know studying that work and publishing that work and kind of showing it to the institution and how that could um, strengthen the culture of writing um, going forward so 
final thoughts, Stephanie? Um, no, I think that, um, you know, this is a, a story that isn't over. <laughs> um, and I think that, you know, even our good, our work bringing in the WPA consultant evaluators um, shows that there's a will and that there's some structural ability to change the culture of writing on campus. And maybe it's through that. Um, so that was successful bringing in those evaluators, writing the self-study and getting three, cl getting a cluster hire out of it. Right. So Hopefully this is a different kind of future than than we envisioned, but one that can that can maybe stick. Awesome. So Stacy, back to you. And I'll turn it over for questions. Um, I think we'd we'd love to discuss. We have a, a solid 10 minutes to chat. I can't, um, in case- Thank you. Thank you to the presenters. Um, this is Alexis Hart um, from Allegheny College, small liberal arts college. Um, so Stacey, one of the things that struck me, um, didn't really surprise me, but struck me, right, is the um, assigning of papers, but not necessarily any instruction in writing. So, you know, you mentioned your excitement that, oh, right, you know, my colleagues across, you know, campus value writing, but seems like they're assigning writing, but not necessarily doing instruction in writing. So what is your role as writing center director? You know, if we're thinking about writing centers and WAC, helping faculty think about, you know, going beyond assigning writing, but really helping student writers um, in doing the work of writing, I guess, and, and research, you know, connected to, um, to Stephanie and, and Joy's um, presentation. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. My um, I kind of mentioned that my my campus is really siloed, and by that I mean like I had read about and thought I was in siloed places before, and then I got to Penn and realized like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so siloed that like email addresses run through different servers because there's totally different tech units for for different colleges and divisions within colleges. Um, so I, the, my connection with faculty here is, is like null and void. There just isn't one. Um, so the, you know, which is, it, you know, we, the last, uh, uh, we just ended off talking a little bit about burnout and things like that. You know, there's a benefit to that personally for me because it keeps my role contained. So one of the ways that I've started thinking about it is, you know, how, what does it mean to train tutors as WAC agents? or WID agents. So like one of the things that that happens and, uh, you know, starts off in interviews now with the, the staff and we, we run for anywhere from 45 to 65 tutors a semester, undergraduate tutors. Um, I recruit people who specifically think of themselves as student advocates. Um, and we talk explicitly, particularly as we're moving through this unit, um, like a lot of our class icebreakers are kind of like exit ticket things are okay what do you raise your hand in class and ask your professor? Um, so, you know, the, like, what do we, what do we do in our writing center sessions? But like, also the writing center is, is, is an idea, right? We read that piece by North kind of starting out and we really talk about, okay, if it's not a space, how do we do writing center work, genre-based tutoring beyond our one-on-one -on -one sessions? And the best way to do that is to like, be the person who always raises your hand in class and we legitimately practice that in my tutor training classes now. Like, what questions would are you going to ask in office hours? And did you raise your hand in class and ask them on behalf of all of the students there who maybe don't know those questions, who maybe don't have like the writing language to ask those questions, or who just are not going to office hours or don't know about, you know, so um, that's kind of the way that I'm approaching it now is a very grassroots piece, um, which I don't know how, how necessarily effective it is, but um, it's also one of those, my last position, WAC was running through the writing center and I, I learned after three years that there was absolutely positively no way to be a writing center director and a WAC WID director. Um, so I don't even try. I, now I think about what can I do with the tutors who I have time with and, and then what can they do as, you know, 60 plus people, what, what can they do out on our campus?
Pickles on the <laughs> For the uh, undergraduate research thing, I'm going to quickly describe what I do, but it's not like bragging. It's going to sound like it's bragging because it's really cool. But um, I'm kind of new to my position as a writing center director, and um, but I'm not new to the university I'm at. And the oh, Stephen does through North Dakota State University, and um, the we have an undergraduate research director who's new to her position. It's similar, it's sort of a course bio kind of thing. She's an engineering professor. And we've just immediately gotten a lot of collaboration going. So we have workshop series, we have a, she's calling it camp, I hate that, but it's, we're having a full day um, retreat for uh, undergraduate researchers. We also have these poster session things. We have simultaneous grad, uh, research and undergrad research. It's also very popular, very visible, very good for both of us. And here's um, what I'm interested in. You talked about there was a conference on undergraduate research. I'm just wondering like what you've seen as potential sites for collaborative research that she and I could do either as presentation or publication because, um, yeah, because. <laughs> <laughs> outside of whack, because again, she's like, you know, she's an engineering professor, so she'd be more interested in that sort of undergraduate research side of things. Yeah, so, so this is, I think, the fourth conference. Is this the fourth, fifth conference that we've presented on our collaborate? Now the narrative is different <laughs> of how this, before we were, you know, looking to the future, and it was all, you know, this is going to be great. But the short answer is that we've been doing, we've, this is our second um, writing center-ish presentation. And then we've done a couple of uh, undergrad research presentations. So the Council on Undergraduate Research is the big hub for undergraduate research directors and just folks who are really invested in undergraduate research. So CUR, that thing that we talked about a couple of times, um, they have two um, national conferences every year, the, the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, which is mostly where undergraduate students go to present their work um, for a national audience. Next year, it's out in Long Beach, so that'll be nice. Um, I'm in Bemidji, Minnesota right now, so very close to North Dakota. Um, uh, but so there's the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, and then right now, um, this week and next week is the Connect UR conference. So that is the more business, um, faculty, and administrator directed conference. But pr I'm presenting, um, I did presentations at both of those conferences. But this is something that a lot of people have had a lot of interest in in both of those venues of professional organizations. Um, the Writing Center folks and the research folks are both very interested in this type of work. Um, so you know, we hadn't thought yet about where we might go for for publication, but there's definitely an audience of just kind of here's what our collaboration is, here's where it's been going. It would be nice to have a little bit more data, I guess. Um, we'd started kind of collecting that just kind of here are the number of folks that have come through the Writing Center on these Murais, um appointments. But generating a little bit more data would probably make the presentations um, you know, a little bit more, give them a little bit more oomph, but people definitely want to hear about this. So definitely, you know, present at these conferences. What kind of data would be good to start collecting? Well, some kind of data that tracks with what that collaboration is. So if you are um, bringing in a certain number of students or faculty doing X, Y, or Z, that is the beginning of a data set. Um, I'm not, I'm a humanities person, um, I've gone through the IRB process and have started trying to put on a hat of like assessment, um, but that's something that your your collaborator should know more about that part, um, right? I don't know what your field or discipline is, but it sounds like you're probably, you know, writing centers. So I don't know if you've done much assessment, but Dr. Bracewell, do you have any insights on some things that, um, you know, would provide kind of heftier data and what sorts of things to collect? I think it'd be, it, if we were doing this next year, which we're not, uh, what I noticed was like, there were very supportive mentor partnerships and there were very unsupportive ones. Um, so it would be interesting and students 
felt that very deeply. And so it would be interesting to think about like student perceptions, like of their mentors, like versus, or their support for their research or some type of way that you could see if like an intervention with the writing center, like if a peer educator, if that made a difference going forward, you know? So that's one thing that I thought was super interesting. And like Stacy was talking about being a stu student advocates, like I felt like we could be like student researcher advocates and the space for students to, uh, you know, we were, could go differently. Like students were blowing off steams and the tutor didn't know quite exactly what to do with that. Um, Although they were experienced with students blowing off steam and writing and then trying to get them on task with, without like sidestepping their emotions and leaving space for that, like it was kind of a new context. So they, they just like writing tasks in a new context, you know, they might have not used the skills they already knew, knew as much. So I would think it'd be interesting to think about like negotiating the mentor relationship and lots of every, you know, every relationship is super supportive at your university and there's a structure for that. Cause I think at ours, like mentors maybe aren't as supported. They're, they're feeling like, you know, and then that kind of translates. So, and it's also like a question of ethics and research, you know, um, like prioritization and conflict of interest, like student go do this. I'm not going to help you, but what, you know, so anyway, that's my yeah. two, two, two cents on that one. Yeah. Well, and I, the way that I, oh, go ahead. I hate to jump in here, but we're at uh, 10 16 and I'm not not being there. I'm not sure if there's people waiting outside of the door to get into to prep for their presentations, but I um, want to thank everyone for coming and for the excellent conversation. Um, I think emails and things like that are all available in the main conference app. So I, I, I hope to follow up and thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your conference. Bye. Thank you.